here we are. This is the Board and Stars Are People podcast. I am here with Daisy Ducati. Uh, we missed a little segment here, so we're just going to hop right into my first question on Porn Stars Are People podcast. Dan Frigolat. Time. Here's, here's what I keep asking everybody. Nobody has an answer for me. What's... I need, like, the secrets of Vegas. The secrets of Vegas. Yeah, like, where am I supposed to... Like, I'm, I'm spending, I'm spending uh, $12 a day on, on two coffees. Uh, <laughs> just, is there any place that I can get something for free without being on the blackjack table for four and a half hours? Um, have you checked out the Pinball Hall of Fame? No, what is the Pinball oh, Hall of Fame? It's so much fun. Um, so it's a collection of vintage pinball machines yep. dating, like some of them date all the way back to the 20s. And you can play all of them. You don't have to pay to get in. There's no admission. And you just go in and play pinball until you're done. Um, it's so Where much fun. It? It's on, I think it's on Maryland. This, is, this sounds fantastic. It's pretty close. It's like maybe a 10 minute drive or cab ride. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pinball Hall of Fame, guys. Check it out. I just, I just discovered Fremont Street yesterday. <sighs> Uh, if you've been to Vegas and you were not uh, enthused, I like to describe Vegas <laughs> as a gigantic Times Square. Yeah, it's That's like Times Square meets Disneyland for grown-ups. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, today I saw a man come out of the pool bleeding. That's what I saw. Oh, no. I so he's just bleeding everywhere, and it, you know, just drops all along. This is what we're dealing with. There's just too many oh, people. Oh, man. People, that, people are in the desert. All they're doing is drinking booze. They're not drinking water. And their whole bodies are drying from the inside out. Yes. So that's what we're dealing with. So I went down to Fremont last night, and it's fantastic. It's so much fun down there. There's it's, so much cool shit. It's like what I thought Vegas was when I, when I watched the movies. It's like, totally. Well, Fremont is where the strip ori- originated, yeah. and then they like started moving all the attractions over yeah, before, here. Before they hoarded out and brought it up here. <laughs> yeah. And I met all the guys that are actually selling the box seats for the football stadiums coming up in 2020, and I didn't know what that, oh, gi- yeah. that giant hole between basically like the win and everything else, you know, going north. I didn't know I didn't know there's a giant hole as the stadium. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. That's gonna be crazy. That's gonna be nuts. Now I don't see so you don't live near the strip so it doesn't it's not really gonna affect your life much to put a to put a stadium there, right? I mean I think I think it's still gonna affect the whole city. Yeah. Like it's I've in been in Oakland during a Raiders game. It's sure. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was just uh, I was in Oklahoma City and they and they said uh, they said putting the, the thunder there yeah. changed the whole thing and it really brought like a lot of a lot of great stuff back to the town and but it's not like it's not like anything is uh, depressed here in Vegas this whole thing is working so. totally everybody's having a ball partying it up I think it's actually gonna make things a little crazier yeah I think the interesting thing will be whether or not they're allowed to put gambling inside the casino because I think the NFL huh has a stance or ha- pretends to have a stance against gambling maybe right like i don't think they could put a sports book in there but it's like can you put a slot machine in there like, what's the, i don't know like the they have that? uh they have slot machines in like the dollar store Everywhere. here right, right, right. <laughs> in the a, airport a, i played a i played a horrible uh comedy show in front of four people at a, at a bar earlier this week and uh, don't call my facebook and look at the flyer and uh and there was like two people playing uh, you know, whatever, slots or, or like video <laughs> poker at the bar, and they were just yelling to each other, and it seemed like the bar cared more about those two people than like the, you know, like the eight or ten that were out on the show. Huh. They were like, no, why are we, why are we here for this? <laughs> it's so funny that the broadcast is down crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, so Vegas, Vegas. Um, so you said you're from Maryland originally. Mm-hmm. Rural, rural Maryland? Yes. I love rural Maryland. Maryland. I do not love rural Maryland. I got the fuck out. <laughs> it's an interesting. It's an interesting thing because um, it's supposed to be kind of uh, you know it's on the east coast. It's it's relatively north. Yeah. But you get to rural Maryland and, and opinions get very very close minded. Well, see, so Maryland technically considers itself the South. Yeah. It's like the top of the Mason Dixon right. line was right. the top of Maryland. Right. So people still have kind of that like all the southern hang-ups yeah you know it's very it's very funny and then so to make matters worse is i've always done a, a fantastic show actually at a firehouse mm-hmm. but you so you add rural to firehouse and those and that kind of personality and you're back yeah. in this sort of like you don't know how many beers it's going to take for somebody to say a racist joke you're mm-hmm. back in that zone in that in that fun little zone totally um, so i remember when i was a kid like 
the KKK still had a pretty heavy presence really? in my hometown. And I remember wow. like going to the boardwalk in Ocean City and seeing uh, KKK, like full hood, capes, everything, passing out flyers wow. to people and like spitting on people's children. They were spitting on people's children? Yeah. That takes ball. I don't know if I could spit on somebody's child. Even, even if I had hate in my heart, I don't know if I could spit on a person's child. Yeah. My mother was not having it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so this is how, uh, get, without saying how old you like, give or take like a year, this would have been. Um, so this was in like the early 2000s. This is the early 2000s? Yeah. And that still blows my mind. That blows. It was crazy. That's fantastic. Uh, wait, so what is your background? I am just about everything. I'm German, Jamaican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, and Native American. Okay. So that's that's just a, a, a bucket of hate for anybody. <laughs> yeah. Really anybody. It's like, you know, they could just pick one. Like, totally. Well, I hate this one, and then there you are. You got it. So that's perfect. <laughs> So that's cool. Um, so we we have we found a little connection. I don't know how deep we want to go down the, this this hole, but um, I was I, I so I yell I, I yell cues at people that wear Syracuse shirts. Yeah. Everywhere I am, and somehow nobody ever understands what the hell I'm doing, uh, and they never acknowledge me. And then you said that you had a little connection. So you were in Syracuse recently. Yeah, I th- I guess it was last summer. I was in Syracuse did you for a see few days. Our mall. Like that's really all we have going right now. I did with the with the carousel. <laughs> yeah, the it was carousel so cool. Mall. Yeah. I didn't actually get to ride the carousel, no, and I'm super disappointed about that. I don't know the last time anybody really rode the carousel, uh, <laughs> and that one particularly. Um, I wanted to try it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know. I think I feel like you get frowned upon if you're not a child when you want to do those things. I get frowned upon all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. What, uh, did, uh, actually, when was the last time you swung on a swing set? Um, maybe like two years ago. Okay. okay. <laughs> Gotta live life, guys. Totally. Gotta live life a little bit. So what else? So what else is going on? So what? Do uh, you have anything to uh, to sort of announce? Do you have any fun stories? Anything that's been going on with you that you think is crazy? Um, well, I am starting a new YouTube channel. I okay. just started production for that. Cool. Um, so do you have, do you have a current one? And you're, yeah. You're well, upgrading to so I one? have a YouTube channel for like financial domination. Sure. And like shopping and yeah, yeah, yeah. stepping on things in high heels. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, a, that's um, a niche. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like related to the sex work stuff that yeah. I do. But uh, the new YouTube channel is going to be completely PG, yeah. like not related to any of the other things that I'm doing. It's going to be a horror channel. So I'm really, really excited. I'm going to be doing interviews. I'm going to be doing makeup Pretty tutorials, good. like all kinds of stuff. Makeup tutorials. Oh, very cool. Yeah, makeup has gotten out of control. Yeah, and that's that's one of my like random unused skills is yeah. I used to demo model for a bunch of effects classes. Oh, shit. And so I know how to do a lot so of the effects have, makeup. So you have like a ton, do you have a ton of photos of you with just like gaping holes in your <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've done, like, uh, burnt effects, frozen effects, yeah, like, monster wow. effects, all kinds of stuff. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I was just talking about this, uh, I think, a couple episodes ago, we were talking about haunted houses and how crazy they've gotten. Totally. Cause really, cause, and then now they're basically, they're just hiring people that have, like, uh, like if, they, if you just have, like, one cool thing you can do, like, there's, like, this, there's this insane guy that can laugh like a lunatic up in New Jersey <laughs> yeah. somewhere in like in like the cornfields of New Jersey and nice. he's just obese and they make him you know they make him basically like a fester and they make him paled out and they do the whole thing and they gape in his eyes like Michael Jackson in the video and he just awesome. comes out and he does this crazy cackle and it's terrifying I mean it's I fantastic. like that. <laughs> yeah, so that yeah so that's that's cool man oh, that's really cool I think we all need, need a little bit of uh, makeup effects Totally. In a while. So that, that could be cool. Actually, I think I was trying to look something up. Now I'm colorblind, so I couldn't, I couldn't, I wasn't gonna be able to do this on my own. But I'm trying to figure out what the hell I was doing. I remember googling for like a, a, a fair amount of time trying to figure out one thing to do, uh, and it was, and it was either for, a, I don't even think it was for a Halloween costume either. I can't remember what the hell I was trying to do. Uh, my brain is no, I'm not working these days. Um, <laughs> Something to do. Oh, this is what it was. I was trying to figure out how to make it look like there were icicles in my beard. Oh. Because we were doing this cool uh, photo shoot in Oklahoma City uh, with this great photographer Trace Thomas, mm-hmm. uh, where uh, I was like in a meat locker. We were trying yeah. to figure out how to do some f- special effects and have my face look like. Needless to say, I couldn't figure it out. Well, I for didn't. the icicles, Cryland has a special product. I forget what it's called. 
Um, but they have a special product that's like this goo. It looks goopy, right? Yeah, yeah. but you can make icicles. Yeah. With so it. So I, so a, we, we had just come up with the the, the the concept that day. B, I think that most of the day was spent trying to find a meat locker. <laughs> and then, and then actually, I, I almost, I, I almost got pneumonia because I was in a meat locker shirtless. That was part of the thing, like in this sleeping bag oh, thing, no. for like. I don't know four hours yeah so the next day i mean i was i was useless as a human the next day but uh, either way i didn't get to, I didn't, we didn't figure out the guys so next time i oh. know who to call yeah <laughs> that's right my alley. My beard. and then i didn't have enough beard either so it, was, it would have been a whole fiasco so totally that's 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 awesome um so what else what else going on what is um so so that so when do you launch a channel um eh. <laughs> probably in the next month or so okay yeah, I just started filming yeah. for it, and I'm kind cool. of still working out what exactly I'm going to be doing. Nice. But, um, yeah, it's technically up already. It's Daisy Doomsday on YouTube. Nice. Check that out. Daisy Doomsday YouTube, guys. Get on there. Get, get yeah. on the subscriptions. Um, all right. Let's. So this is a little topical just because just I put some hard-earned money on uh, the Cavs. Do you <laughs> care at all about the, this basketball series? No. We got the Cavs versus the Celtics. <laughs> And the Cavs are basically dominating. People are like are writing on Twitter that uh, that they shouldn't even have, um, like they shouldn't even have this many games in the playoffs because there's no good teams. So there's just the, there's just the two teams, the Spurs and the, the Golden State Warriors, were supposed to be like equally matched. Yeah. And then one of the guys, Kawhi Leonard, got his knee broken or something happened to him, and so now they're basically just just running through. So it's just so it's basically it's going to be like eight games now. Yeah. Between the two teams until the the final teams meet. But you just told me you don't care. So never. Um, <laughs> I was the girl in the strip club that would pretend to know about basketball. Yeah. Well, so, how do you, well, so how do you pretend that? What's, what's the trick? A lot of times I would just read the paper before work and yeah. just recite whatever I read in the paper. Like, well, yeah, but that's what everybody else does. Why don't you just retain the information? This is it. You're like, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna let it store. I'm just gonna let it hover above my brain and never land inside of it. I stopped dancing a while ago. No, that's all anybody, <laughs> but that's all anybody does. Is, I mean, I'm, especially you, you look at Facebook, you look at Twitter, and you're like, totally. you're like, this guy is saying exactly what Stephen A. Smith said this morning on on, uh, on first take, and then everybody like thinks that they're an expert all of a sudden. I think that's the problem <laughs> with, uh, there's too much information now. We can all pretend to be an expert for like 15 totally. minutes. Totally. But it's like, my favorite part is when is when you can tell a person kind of is, is stealing opinions. Yeah. You're like, let's... Let's keep this conversation going until they run out of information. Exactly. Get to that. Get to that mark at the end. So they're funny. Get defend, they'll get defensive and then get pissed off and then say, <laughs> whatever, man. It's, and then go the other way. That's my favorite. See, I'll admit when I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit when I'm bullshitting. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> yeah. Usually, yeah, we will try to get in sports conversation. Uh, other than basketball, mostly Syracuse basketball. Mostly, I'll just be like, yeah, man, I'm not really. I'm, really, I'm not. I'm not up to speed right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get like I'll get like two sentences in a couple times, and then I'll be like, "Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not equipped for this conversation." Right it's <laughs> totally. Gonna it's not going to be good. So yeah, so uh, so so yeah, basically the the Fremont Street thing. That, that, so this is the second time in Vegas. So what I've been talking about every time I go to places is that the fact that I like to stay with people who live in the town because you don't get to know the city unless you stay with people that actually live totally. there. Totally. And I and I let myself uh, fall victim to it again. You I, get stuck in the strip. It's designed to keep you locked in. I, I, I was try, and I was trying to get like uh, like recommendations from the concierge, and they were just telling, pointing at places in the it's building. Disneyland. I was even trying to. I asked them. Uh, I had to take the bus yesterday to, to get from here yeah. to Fremont, and I was trying to ask them because uh, you, you can either buy a residential pass or a strip pass, and I yeah. didn't know which one to do. And I had said two of the bus lines to the concierge, and just confused eyebrows stared back at me. And I was like, one of the things I'm saying is, is is on the sheet that you just handed me. Like, why are you confused? That's Which so pass funny. do I buy? And he just didn't know, so he just I could tell he made up an answer in a second. It's awful. So, oh no. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get to so I'm gonna get down to, to Fremont downtown later on today. Maybe cool. get a cup of coffee for less than six dollars. Yeah, that's expensive. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I like going to the Dunkin' Donuts over by. Uh, not the one in the Hard Rock, but the one next to the Hard Rock. Oh a, wait. Is there a Dunkin' on the Strip? It's, it's a little bit off the strip, because like Hard Rock's a little bit off yeah, the strip, yeah, yeah. but it's across the street from Hard okay. Rock. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And across the street from the Dunkin' Donuts, there's this really, really good pizza place, and it's it's like a Buffalo-style like pizza and wings. That's um, awesome. And the family's like from Buffalo. No shit. Oh, no oh, shit. So now you're speaking so my language. It's Dunkin' Donuts in upstate New York. I should have talked to you a week it's ago. It's called Naked City Pizza. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I love that place. That it's so Naked good. City and it's pizza. cheap. Yeah. 
The only <laughs> thing I found, yeah, the, 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 the best I could do was either buy peanut butter or just decide that you that it's going to cost $25 <laughs> to have lunch. Uh, yeah. In Las Vegas, it's kind, of, it's kind of ridiculous. Also, if you want, like, cheap casino food, yeah. Silver 7s, is, it's also near Hard Rock. I want cheap everything. And you can get a whole meal for, like, 10 bucks. I bet a bunch of money on the Cavs just so I could win back my coffee money. That was like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, 60 bucks in coffee right now. I totally. The strip just drains that's, you. It's, 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 it's horrifying. I did. I did get. Uh, I, I. So you ever do? You ever do the thing? I don't know. You ever like let the promoters take you out and do the whole deal? You, no. I. I always. I, I always go back and forth about what I want to do. I did it last night. It was actually. I had a really good time. They. They took care of me at Hakkasan. This kid Thomas who saw me. I still haven't been to Hakkasan. It's very cool. I just don't get it. I still don't get the thing. So what happens is they put you in, like a little circle, like a little swingers booth. You know the movie Swingers. The, the <laughs> yeah. Circle booth. They yeah. put you in a circle booth. They put a bunch of booze in the middle of you, and you just sit. You put your feet on the, on the part where your butt goes, and you sit on top of the the thing, and you just stare at other people just watch. that are in like the mosh pit area that are like staring <laughs> at the you know like it was Tiesto who were just whatever, and yeah. then like every like uh, seventeen or eighteen minutes, like some sort of like like gun shoots out, uh, mist and fog, and then every like nineteen minutes, just like confetti drops. <laughs> and I had a good time, like you know, I ended up uh, networking meeting a bunch of people because I because I went there alone. Which yeah. Is, uh, um, it was the funniest part was I was like, hey, it's just gonna be me because the guy was like, hey, I got you, your crew, no problem. Yeah. I was like, I'm a crew of one. It's like <laughs> the old army commercial. He was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like, all right, just come at like 12:30 then. I was like, no, you said you come at 10 for dinner. He's like, you just want to go by yourself. And I was like, yeah, that's that's my favorite person. That's that's who I go with. I go to the pool <laughs> by myself. By myself is my favorite. I was at nice. the pool by myself. By myself is the best. And that allowed me to meet all these people. I think if I was with like a crew of people that like I didn't give a shit about. Totally. My buddy was like, dude, just get on Tinder and just find people. Just, like, <laughs> just invite. Them. I bet Tinder in Vegas is so weird. You know what? I, I don't know <laughs> what's going on, but I haven't. It's either I, I, I'm I'm either the ugliest person on earth, uh, or something's up with my Tinder because it, it keeps it keeps logging me out, and I also haven't got a single match. So uh, I'm it's weird. I'm dead to the world. <laughs> Well, there's also just like a huge volume of people, and so like that's why I thought it. Yeah, I thought it would like work in my around. favor. Yeah, I did like the boost yesterday. I was trying to do it. <laughs> I was trying to make some friends, do the whole thing, get people to shows. Nothing, man. Nothing. Dead to the world. I either got to change my photos or just it's over. I might be just be over for me. <laughs> I put my re- I finally put my real age on there. Oh. I had my I had a fake age on there. For like, I kept it thir- after thirty. I was like, I'm just gonna. Doesn't it just like log in through Facebook yeah. though and use yeah. all your Facebook info? Yeah. Now now I have to admit that I went on Facebook and I changed my. So <laughs> so I went to change my age back to my real birthday. So I yeah. just dropped it back three years. So I went to change my age to my real birthday because I was because my birthday was coming up and I didn't want people being like, hey, you're not fucking thirty. You you did. <laughs> um, so I went to change it back and then Facebook had to send me this message. They said, hey, uh, thank you for changing your age. Just so you know, this is the last time. You're allowed to change your age. <laughs> it's so annoying how Facebook is dead set on having everybody's like solid, legit information. Yeah. Like, leave me alone. It's the internet. Let me be who I want to be. Twenty-five every four years. Come on. I had to break up with Facebook. <laughs> it's so. I really. I wish I was at that level, but I don't. I haven't figured Twitter Dude. out, and I think Twitter's on its way out. I'm not sexy enough for Instagram, so I can't get followers there. So. I just gotta keep uh, hanging on. I got three. I had three accounts on on Facebook because I figured out ten years ago how to get five thousand friends. And <laughs> doing it, so that's the yeah. only one I know. I'm, See, I'm an no, old man. maybe like three or four years ago, uh, back when I was dancing. Yeah. I would. I had like a Daisy Ducati Facebook. Yeah. And uh, I would post pictures of like, hey, I'm at the club. Here's me in a bikini. Come see me. Come blah, blah, blah. And it was like something I would wear to a pool and yeah. like be out in public in. And uh, there Did was. You get flagged? I was getting flagged over and over and over again. And Haters. It was happening to me and like a specific group of my friends. Yeah. And so I just got mad and posted a picture of my butthole. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, kiss my ass, Facebook. Did it, uh, now I think if, I think you could creatively post an anus and have it stay up there for a little while. If you well, could. so what happened was, <laughs> I, I like deactivated my account a couple days after that because it didn't get taken down. It didn't. It was up there for like three that's, days that's before amazing. I deactivated my that's account. Amazing. And then just the other day, I reactivated my account just to see what it looked like. I was like trying to look for some just pictures to see what or your something. Like? No, I, I was just looking for something on the page, yeah. 
And I got this message with the picture all big on my computer, like, hey, you shouldn't do this. You're banned for 24 hours oh. now. And I was like, that was three years ago. You're just now banning just me? Catching up. No, <laughs> like, what's funny is they were waiting. They're like waiting at like, They were at waiting until door. I logged in. Yeah, like a stalker just like at your house, just like waiting. Just like, I saw you. I saw you leave. Yeah. So, it's funny. So, I did that while these people were going by. That was actually awkward. <laughs> just like, who, me? So, like, what? What are they talking to me? No, you know what's funny is I don't know how I thought we looked relatively official. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I you know we got I got a couple pieces of sound equipment. We have mics, mic stands, whole thing, headphones. Totally. Um, the last couple of days we've been doing these, and people just come sit right next to us and have loud arguments with like their significant oh, no. others. And we're like, are you out of your mind? Like, can you do you can do you, you not? Have, do you have eyeballs at all? Like, there's a hundred <laughs> there's a hundred other places they can sit. Where we are right now is like the old Sands Expo Center. Yeah. And I guess that's, I found out from doing one of these the other day that that's where AVN used to be, was in there. Oh, really? But this whole thing basically just looks like where you get picked up at the airport. Totally. Uh, so there's like, picture, you know, hundreds of little, I don't know. And what it's like called? a huge Ottomans? space. Huge if someone space. wanted to sit, they could sit anywhere. anywhere on earth. And they go right next to us and then they have like a, like a, like a pissed off Skype conversation. So funny. They FaceTime the person that they clearly shouldn't be in a relationship <laughs> with. Well, that's like, when I lived in San Francisco, I had this apartment, like, right on Haight Street. Yeah. And uh, my bedroom window that. faced the street. It was, like, in Lower Haight, and yeah. it was right above this Irish sports bar. Yeah. And it was, like, the loudest, craziest Irish sports bar in San Francisco. And so people would get drunk and belligerent at the bar and then come outside and be all loud. And my, it was right below my bedroom window, and sure. my bed was right up at the window. And so I'd always catch couples breaking up outside so my window fun. and I'd be up there like in my pajamas and stick my head out the window and be like yeah dump him <laughs> <Get rid of laughs> just him in on their conversation shit. actually that what's funny is uh, <laughs> in every part of the world in every language everywhere no matter what time it is when that argument happens there's always a girl <laughs> that will yell out the window dump him he sucks <laughs> Nobody totally. ever has the dude's back. Even dudes will go by and be like, yeah, he's horrible. Nobody ever totally. has the dude's back. I Nobody's think there ever was, like... There was one time there was like a girl slapping the shit out of her boyfriend. Yeah. And That's the one, he the was one just time. like sitting there and taking, taking it, it and just being real chill about it. Wow. And I think I told her she needed to leave. <laughs> wow. Out the window. How much authority do you have in pajamas out of, out a window, though? Enough. <laughs> <laughs> it was so it worked. Yeah. She left. I mean, the other thing that I used to do when they were being too loud and annoying is I, I had, like, a big surround sound st yeah. stereo system in my room. Sure. And so I'd put on, like, gnarly BDSM porn. Okay. And point the speakers oh, toward shit. the window and just sit there and stare at them. Just, just <laughs> uh, loud spankings. Yeah, just, just, just like, crazy whipping sounds wow. and screaming and... Tasering. That's great. Tasering. Man, I don't. I don't have enough information. <laughs> this is another one of these conversations I got too. Far but it was great because they couldn't see what was happening. Right. They could just hear it. Yeah. And then people. People were calling themselves the machine. The guy the guy. <laughs> Give it to her, the machine. Um, it was great. Or I'd have conversations with people through the intercom too. Yeah. Oh, you'd be like, excuse me, I'm up here and I don't like what you guys are talking about. Uh, totally. Can you just fucking find a life? Totally. Um, yeah, I, I, I find that I like, I love watching like dumb people do things, but uh, I find that like if I get involved in the conversation, I very quickly say words that a don't exist and just like just like my <laughs> anger takes over. Uh, I'm not I'm not a good arguer. Aww. I'm not I'm not good in the pocket. So I'd rather I'd rather so I. <laughs> I actually really just like I get as close as I can to them, and then I just and then I just laugh hysterically to myself, and then tweet something that doesn't get any likes. So Aww. that's how I handle it. <laughs> that's how I handle it. See, I'm that's like a skill of mine, and I'm talking shit. Yeah, I am a professional it. shit talker. There, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm in New York the other day. Uh, I, I got I got a, a friend coming to visit me. She wants to go get um, eight dollar uh, um, uh, cookie dough. Mm. They're selling, they're selling, they sell cookie dough in New York City. They sell it's like they sell two ice cream scoops, seven dollars in New York City. That's the new. It's fat. just straight cookie dough. It's cookie dough. Oh. That's the yeah, and they have like seven. They have, they have you can get an oatmeal raisin cookie. You can get. So I mean, it's 
it's ridiculous. That's kind of exciting. <laughs> How have I never seen that? And there's so many things where they have like a doorman and like counting people, like, are you three? And you know, they, they, like, wow. they have it set up kind of like a speakeasy. Serious. So I grab a table for us to chill. I'm not going to eat any cookie dough. And, and uh, I just grab the table to chill, let her, let her do the whole line thing in the fiasco. Yeah. And then this woman comes in and like, you ever see somebody just, just basically just elbow through people? Just mm-hmm. like just just like like linebacker through this lady like linebackers through with haste and then grabs this table, starts taking chairs and like from my table, hasn't asked me a thing. Huh. Uh, and then like takes her arm and just knocks everything from the table onto the floor. And I was like, Christ what a lady. Jerk. And she was like, Excuse me, are you talking to me? And I was like she's like and I was I was like, Well yeah and she I think for a second she thought I was like on her side. And I was like, yeah, you're like a horrible person. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. And I called her a horrible person. And she was like, do you have kids? And I was like, no. I was like, that makes you even worse of a person. You're doing this for your children? You're supposed to be an, an example of a human. And you've just armed. You're just raising little monsters. And she's like, no, someone else wasn't supposed to leave their trash here. And just arms it onto the floor. Wow. And then says, we're 20. It's, we're going to be 20 of us. Twenty? Yeah, How many know. kids did this lady yeah, have? Yeah, and it's like, and then, and then you really get to call into question, like, who allowed this lady to be in charge of this many people? And I get, uh, like, having kids is going to make you a little crazy, but uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, uh, you know, it should put things in perspective, not take it away. Totally. That, uh, that there is other, th- like, that there's a concern in the world for people. Totally. Know, she, was, she was the worst. But yeah, That's I, crazy. I, but I immediately was just, like, she was talking, and then I was just like, hey, just feel free not to talk to me anymore. Like I didn't. I just yeah. didn't want to. I didn't have here. enough. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Ha- I did Because the thing is, when somebody's that awful and like just aggressively crappy, you can't explain it to them. No. And so getting through is just. You not can't talk problem. logic with crazy. <laughs> so I was bummed. I was like, because in my head, I was like, oh, I'm going to show her. And See, then, one of my favorite things to do is just to remain completely calm and stoic and tell people about themselves yeah. and just watch them explode and just sit there and stare at them. I feel like I, I feel like that's an invitation. I feel like you should do that to me and see what happens. <laughs> like I don't have any specific. I don't. I don't know specifically enough what it is. Okay, so let's just say, uh, let's just say I was the dude who just bled in the pool, and like hung in there too long. <laughs> and, then, and then basically he was just dripping how, blood. So wait, how did time. how did he start bleeding? Did he cut himself on something, no, or did he, he just, get hit? He just got like a massive nosebleed. Gross. And I can relate because I I don't get nosebleeds unless I was an album. But he just so stayed dry. in the pool. Yeah, he was just like like he like for, so he so he did the, he did the check right because you, like you first you know that something's happening and he did the check and so he checked his nose and he looked at his hand and, and it's I mean it's it, I mean it's gushing. And then he kind of like looked at it for a little while, and then he just sort of like slowly he's getting out of the pool. But he, as he's going, the whole time it's just dripping in the pool. And then <laughs> he starts dripping on the like on the whatever like the tile on the outside of the thing. And then he just kind of like goes over to like this bar. So I, I don't know if he grabs a towel or a uh, or, a, or a tissue or what, but uh, I, it was like an, it was like another 15 minutes before like the cleaning crew came. And they, I mean, and they came out like like cat in the hat. I mean, they had they had like multiple different things to spray on. Totally. And they were making faces because there's blood all over the pool. But yeah, like that's a serious biohazard. Yeah. That's yeah. gross. Yeah, I don't. I guess I guess I guess I gotta feel a little bit bad for him because I don't. Yeah, I don't think he did. But it's before. his fault for not like getting up and dealing with it. Like yeah. step away from the bar, go to the bathroom, and handle your shit. Yeah, and that's the other thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the other thing. He was basically just like standing on the corner of the thing, just like moving his hands like he was just like he was this hand would fill up then he moved to the other hand it's like what? <laughs> where do you, yeah where do you live where do you live that you can't come up with any strategy right yeah. like just stand in the corner and actually and was, he actually he was actually standing where everybody comes into the like comes into the pool so basically there was probably oh, no. 40 people that came in the first thing they saw was this lunatic just bleeding on the side of the pool. <laughs> and the people that are in the pool are just like stewing in his own biohazards nobody, like yeah nobody and I was yeah I was trying to think what the what what the math equation for blood versus chlorine percentages it's um, still gross like yeah. even if it kills the germs it's still gross yeah, it's not it's not great no. Ooh. So did that did that thing ever happen where where if you pee in the pool it like turns red? I don't know. I've always heard rumors of it, That's but I've never seen yeah. if it's real. Yeah. That would be so funny. Do you pee in the pool? Sometimes. Do you pee in the ocean? Definitely. Okay. I <laughs> I've, I've been having stage fright the last couple of years. I uh, I'd be in the ocean and it's and it's it's so far and few in between that like uh, I, my body just keeps being like, no, you're potty trained. But I was like, no. Nah, <laughs> it was like. 
but I, like I'm on a beach. Like, there's, where else am I gonna go? So you go in, and you just kind of wait out, and I can't get it to go, man. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the problem See, is. See, I, I try not to pee in pools now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I have to be really drunk for that to happen. Sure. But sure. The ocean, yeah, whatever. There's yeah. Things doing all kinds of stuff there. That's actually the thing <laughs> that I like about Vegas. So, uh, in New York City, and particularly um, Times Square, you can't pee anywhere. Yeah. You can't. You, like, there's, oh, you yeah. can't go into any place. You got to purchase something. You got to. You got to be ten bucks in before they let. They give you a code. Totally. It's just the thing. Here Even you then, they're like, no. Yeah. They, they just look at you like, no, nah, I don't want you to have the code. Uh, or it's like you'll, you'll spend the ten dollars and you'll go in the bathrooms out of order. So yeah. in any pee emergencies, you got to just maybe risk it. Mm-hmm. But here in Vegas, you pee everywhere. Totally. Not that you can just pee on the street, but there's a bathroom. There's bathrooms. Yeah. Everywhere. Every door is open. Just come in, gamble. Totally. Uh, so. Theoretically, without gambling and without spending, without buying coffee, you can, you can pee for free. Yes. In Vegas, so that that's a hidden gem of Vegas. Yes, and the ba- the bathrooms aren't like gnarly and sketchy. They're no, they're pretty actually, clean. They're, <laughs> they're, pretty, they're actually pretty good. And I'm and I'm a, and I'm a public restroom uh, proponent. <laughs> um, I, generally, I, I'll try not to, to go to the to go in like a in like an airport or a or a bus station. Oh, it's scary. Uh, it's because New York has the most horrifying homeless. Yeah. Bathrooms in Port Authority. Uh, so you just don't want to be touching any of those things. That's how it is in San Francisco, too. They have, like, yeah, the so little, like, homeless. pop-up bathrooms that are just, like, a standalone thing. Just on the street? On the street. And I think you I think you pay, like, a quarter or something, and it uh, opens up, and it's supposed to be self-cleaning. But I've seen the inside of one of those. It yeah, looks like is, a crime scene. What does it mean to be self-cleaning? I don't. I think it just, like, sprays itself with something when you oh, that leave. That doesn't sound good at all. Yeah, it's scary it's the scariest thing i have seen what if you get stuck in there so like we know technology doesn't work on the level that, we, that it's supposed to like i can't even yeah. get the hand dryer to work most of the time and totally. and, then, and getting a second piece of paper towel totally is like a is like a two-hour commitment yeah and the weight between the two pieces <laughs> so i can't imagine having some sort of mister actually misting and then on top of that and what if it sprays you while you're in there right, what if you're in there you're, that's the only that's the biggest thing i'm worried about pretty much the only people that actually use those are people trying to shoot up yeah like it's not no or, or really really confused tourists now why why is uh, and, and, I've, and i've seen it and, I, and i've heard it but why is san francisco such a homeless uh um haven i guess is the word i want I mean, I think a part of it is the hippie culture of San Francisco. Yeah. There's like a culture of people that want to be so like homeless street purpose. kids. Okay. There's like a huge drug problem out there. And also I've heard rumors that places like Vegas have bust their homeless yes. to us. Now this is this is a rumor that I think started for the most part in uh, New York because they definitely did that. There yeah. Was, there was like one of the things that New York State did under Pataki was they moved everyone who was uh, like clinically insane that was in some that had to be in like a uh, you know not a padded room but one of those one of those like an asylum yeah some sort of asylum they just moved all those people to New Jersey so they didn't show up on the census records totally. and on the stats so that's something that that, that people definitely do um, yeah. Also, I bus. think that like there's not a whole lot of extreme weather, so homeless yeah. survive longer yeah, out there. Like in pr- Vegas, it gets too hot. hot. Yeah, you would dry up. In New and York, die. it gets hot and cold. Right. Like. Right. Yeah. From what I hear, people tr- when the winter, people are trying to get arrested. That's one of the, the problems that they have is, is, is having to arrest homeless people. Yeah. Because uh, they don't want to have to pay for the the that burden as totally. a, you know, as a society. But um, yeah, I guess that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Because I remember I was in Fort Lauderdale, but it, but I was there at a time when it's not crazy. Like, it gets crazy hot and humid, like, unlivable. But I was there, and I remember uh, being in Lauderdale, and, like, there was, this, there was, like, showers everywhere. And I was like, dude, I could be homeless here. This would be great. <laughs> totally. Yeah, shower. That's, that's my main, and this is what's wrong with me. That's my main concern <laughs> with homelessness. It's like, listen, I'll be homeless, but, like, I need a fucking shower today. Totally. Like, I not shower. Totally. I had this I had this scenario once where, uh, where there was no heat or hot water in my apartment, and, um... And I, I, I was I was I was young and and uh, and, and brooding. Uh, no, I, so I, I, well, I got this girl to come back to my house, and then after it happened, I was like, "You shouldn't have come here. Like, I don't have power <laughs> or, or water or, or heat. Like, th- like, there's this is a tree house right now." <laughs> and all my brain kept doing was like thinking about like I was like I was like raising my confidence to a level where I was like, "Yo, I could get laid as a homeless dude. Like, I'm killing it right now." And I was like, and then I started scheming how to be homeless. 
That's and so still funny. get girls. I was like, I was like, I'll just have, a, I'll just, I have things. I'll just go get a storage unit for hundred bucks a month. There we go. <laughs> Gym for ten bucks, hundred ten dollars. I'm good. Take a shower, do the thing, and then every once in a while, I'll convince the girl to come back to the storage unit. I got this. You know. <laughs> I saw a thing online. I think it was on YouTube that went viral of like some dude that was living in a storage unit yeah. and he was like trying to date in this 2017? girl. Uh, it, it was recent. I don't know if it was this year. But, like, the girl freaked out she on him out. and, yeah. like, filmed it and was like, no, yeah. no, no, no. Because no. he had a nice car, he yeah. had nice clothes, nice shoes, but he, he lived in a storage unit. Yeah. yeah, and oh, she was like, no, 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 you need to stop spending money on rims and yeah. get your shit together. No shit. So she left him. Yeah, she There's was the not lesson, happy. Guys. There's the lesson. Girls want guys with things. <laughs> I was or, having this debate. We were talking about this with my buddy the other day because I keep trying to, to really to instruct this, this bigger idea about capitalism and, and, and how it relates to, to getting pussy. And <laughs> uh, my buddy put the, okay, just, just dropped this, this incredible piece of information in my lap and he said, uh, the reason why cheetahs are so fast is because female cheetahs were faster than male cheetahs and so they had to adapt faster and just that whole adaptation of male cheetahs trying to catch Huh. Female cheetah pussy makes them run 81 <laughs> miles an hour. It. That's really funny. So, like, if girls out could outrun us, we all dudes would run like I, I guess, even faster. I, yeah, I, don't have, I don't have any good stats. I don't have like a good like a, like a four second forty. I don't really know how long a forty is supposed to take, but uh, yeah. So that's a, that's that, that's an incredible fact. That's interesting. What were you gonna say? I forget what I was gonna say. We were talking about we were talking about cheetah pussy before. We were <laughs> cheetah about, pussy. You no, know, storage units and capitalism and and uh, and women needing and uh, getting laid. Yeah, and women needing a nice car to to give up the poon. <laughs> Do people call it the poon anymore? I don't know. Now I call it a hooey. A hooey. <laughs> I don't know if that's more or less vulgar. I think that's more like what like a little <laughs> child would call it, right? Maybe. Did you did you call your parents anything weird? Were you like were they like or your grandparents? Were they, did you like meemaws and peepaws and things like that? No. I didn't. I, I didn't understand. I always said it was grandma and grandpa, and then we would just say the last name for us. And then I have I have uh, god kids and, and nieces and nephews and, and cousins now. Who yeah. Have kids and and it's there's a lot of meemaw peepaw things. Totally. Yeah. For me, it was always grandma and grandpa and like. Yeah, I don't know, not and I don't understand. Like I had an aunt Nana, but it was like derivative from her name. Yeah. Okay. I just don't get it. I, if I had to be a peepaw, if somebody, if I had to like say to a, to a human being, call me peepaw or like peepaw, <laughs> peepaw's here. I just don't think I could look at myself in the mirror. I, I already think we talk baby talk yeah. to more people than we need to. I also feel like adults don't give kids enough credit Not with their intelligence. Like no. if you talk to a child with baby talk, then it's going to stunt their ability to, forever. yeah. yeah. To like process language. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. We have so I'm I'm one of four kids. I was number two. My brother's number four, so he's nine years younger than me, eleven years younger than my older sister. Yeah. So the gap was crazy. So by the time he showed up, my parents were done. They were done playing the games. They totally. were done doing the thing. He was even the youngest out of all the cousins. So everybody we just talked because we were having adult conversations in the mm-hmm. house at that point. And so by the time he was eleven, everybody else was like, you know, you know, 16 to 22, and so he's 11 in the house, and I mean, he was a grown-ass adult. I mean, the kid was a grown-ass man by the time he was 12. Yeah. I remember going to, I had a, uh, I had a girlfriend uh, when I was 18, and, and, and I remember going to their house, and he's with me, hanging out, and I was, at that point, I was hanging out with him like he was like a normal uh, adult person. I didn't think anything of it, and, and I can, I'll never forget this. My girlfriend's mom like, 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 leaned over, put her hands on her knees, and she's like, and what can I get you, an apple juice? And the look he gave her. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, who do you think you are? <laughs> I love it. It, it. Like, it put things in perspective for me as to how much greater his, his knowledge of the world ever was than mine. Like, I was a little, like, I went to college as a little kid. Like, I forgot, I forgot, <laughs> st- like, I, I forgot my underwear. I had to call my mom to come bring me my oh. underwear. <laughs> Because I wasn't, I wasn't a grown person, but my brother went to college. How do you forget your underwear? I don't know. You, you stressed out. You're packing everything. You're like, what do I need? <laughs> like, I need pencils. I need paper. I need this computer. You know uh, what? That reminds me of the first time I came to Vegas. Yeah, what happened? Uh, it was my 21st birthday, okay. and it was it was already kind of funny because I was coming with like my grandma and my aunt. Okay. They were like, "We're gonna take you to Vegas yeah. for your birthday. You're turning 21." 
And uh, of course, I partied the night before when I actually turned 21 yeah. with my friends. Sure. And I got shit faced. It was my 21st yeah, birthday. And so then I was like, oh do. no, I forgot to pack. And so I had to pack drunk because I was flying out in the drunk morning. Pack. Yeah. And I was like done drunk. Yeah. And so I get to Vegas and I'm like, I have no idea what's in that suitcase. So you open it up and it's just. I open it up, there's like one high heel, half a bikini, <laughs> like a couple of shirts, no underwear, like. <laughs> so, you, so what was it? So what'd you have to do? I had to buy a bunch just of stuff everything. when I got here, yeah, because I just forgot everything. That's right. And, and, and when you get to that point, it's like, that's the better way to pack. Like, I just want to get to the point in my life where I can just <laughs> land at the place that I'm at, I have an extra outfit and a backpack, yeah. and just go to the store and just get the, uh, just get just the rest of the Just do it, yeah. That would be the way to live life. Totally. Been walking around, I had to, I had to give somebody uh, $5 just to take my bag, I gotta give them $20 to pick it back up later, like, <laughs> with like the concierge. And oh yeah, they hustle those it. tips out here. Oh my God, I tried to give a guy, so <laughs> I, I fucked up and I knew it, because I only had big bills when I started, and I went to get my bag the first day, I had it, I had it locked up with them too, and I went to get it back, and I looked at my wallet, and I was like, oh fuck, all I got is 20s, I'm not, I'm not trying to be $20 in right now already, um, <laughs> for nothing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he brings it upstairs, fine, whatever. I I get it. Uh, I'd still rather have it be ten, but like you know, I'm looking to drop a five on this guy, and so um, I, I think I was trying to give him like three bucks or something like that. So I gave him a twenty, and I was like, "Hey, do you have like do you have like six, do you have sixteen to give me back?" And he's like, "I don't think I have 16 he, like, he was like, <laughs> "He was like maybe fifteen. Like he was like like so like it was this oh weird way God. of like bartering. And I was like, "All right." And then he pulled out a wad, and obviously it was like mostly ones and a bunch of fives. And I was like, "You son of a." <laughs> I, just, I just agreed to that. I mean, I could be a dick and be like, no, give me the 16. Totally. But I know, I even agree. even like food delivery people will hustle the tips yeah. out here. Like when I get a pizza delivered now, to my what's house. A, what's a normal tip? What's a good tip? <laughs> uh, I mean, for bags, like a couple bucks. Yeah, so, so you're talking. Okay, but so for, for pizza, pizza, like I try to tip like 15, 20% for any kind of food. Okay. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Like I delivered pizzas yeah. in so what, high so, school. So you're talking, you know, so you're talking two, three bucks generally on Yeah. Those, okay. Like maybe a five if it's like an expensive pizza. Nice. Yeah. But no, like sometimes they do the, 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 I don't have change thing. And I'm like, no, I know you have change. Yeah. That's why I pay, and that's why <laughs> you're I delivering pay with, pizzas all night. That's why I pay with a car. Yeah. I don't want to have to have that interaction. I'm like, I'm like credit card, credit card. They call, I call them back and they're like, sir, what's the problem? It's like, you, you need to go credit card. I have to pay for this credit card so I can write it on the thing. But then that moment sucks too. Totally. Because he's looking over your shoulder and then if you start if you start whipping a one or a two, there's you know, they start making noises. They start grumbling. But I don't know, from my perspective I've worked a ton of jobs that have relied on tips, including delivering yeah. pizzas. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, the tip is extra. It's not a mandatory yeah. thing. Like yeah. I'm gonna give you a tip. I have a hard time with the with the delivery one because the so there's no better or worse delivery situation. And then half the time you get inside, there's no, there's no silverware in the bag. Like for some reason, yeah. if, I, if I get Chinese food or something, I, I, first of all, I want, I want the chopsticks. Yeah, That's important. it's a part of the experience. Because I'm going <laughs> to eat with the chopsticks and then later on the extra pair, I'm going to use that to light a candle that I can't get my hands <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I use them to put the coals on my hookah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I need all that. But I, there's, there's something about if you bring me, uh, you know, the self-contained chunk of food I want to eat this motherfucker with a, with a plastic fork yeah I don't want to use a real fork yeah it's the last thing I want to do uh, and you so order out so you don't have to do dishes right right you just put it in the bag put it back in the bag staple it back up put it in there make sure your dog doesn't eat it yeah but yeah the, the, I don't so I, I'm a great tipper but yeah. I have a hard time when, it, when it's that five second interaction totally the guy gives you a coffee and it's like do I give him a dollar do I, should, do I need to give him a dollar he didn't do anything he just poured it into the cup Versus, you know, versus the server that, you know, did the whole song dance and had to listen to your dumb, you know, father tell jokes. <laughs> My dad's got the same, uh, the same dumb uh, restaurant joke every time. Uh-oh. Plate is empty. Yeah. Frigolettes can eat. We, we, we uh, I was, there was a clean plate club instituted as children. <laughs> so we know how to eat. So empty plate. My father's chilling in front of the plate. Server comes over yeah. to take it. Uh, and uh, and he'll, if they try to take it, sometimes they'll go, I'm still working on that. <laughs> and then they get all comfortable. They don't know what to do. They're, they're like, like, oh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an uh, empty plate. Right, yeah, like, what are you doing? And then, uh, and then, and then like, how was everything? Empty plate. He'd be like, couldn't eat another bite. 
terrible, something like that. And then they're still they're just like, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. Are you? Because he doesn't. I, and I think maybe this is the thing. timing is important in comedy. Totally. And the other one is like the face that you make afterwards matters a lot. And you gotta I, let him know that it's a joke. That, yeah, like, like <laughs> wink, do something. And yeah. I don't, and I don't think he has that face. I think the frigolets generally have sort of like, uh, well, I definitely have douche face, but I think the frigolets <laughs> have sort of like, yeah, I might be being for real right now with you face. <laughs> That's funny. Shout out my father. Um, it doesn't matter. He's not going to listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the dad joke. So Syracuse, we did the we did the carousel. Man. I, I'm, I'm, now I'm like, I really want to go on the carousel. Like, man, now I'm thinking Totally. I, I'm going to do it next time I go. There's, I'm going to do it. There's one in the wind, but it's made out of um, flowers. And I, I think they frown upon you riding that one. But why? But why? I know. Like, are there kids in the wind? No, no. If I'm going to pay for a room at the wind, I don't want to see any children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see a single child the whole how, trip. I think that's how people feel about uh, children in general. Totally. Like, they can go to Circus I haven't Circus. Seen a ton, <laughs> I haven't seen a ton of kids in Vegas, actually. Good. Yeah. You know, Fuck when, I first, when I first moved here, I was walking through, uh, was it Bally's? Or, I think it might have been Bally's. And... <laughs> There was like a lady at a slot machine yeah. with a stroller, yeah. like rocking her kid so to sleep, smoking kid. a cigarette with the doing playing slots. So, so wait, so so she, so she's got so she got two hands going. She got one hand on the on the stroller, rocking it back and forth like a duck. Yeah, and then character. she's got the cigarette she's hand, cigarette like pressing hand. the buttons. So the cigarette hand is doing all the uh, doing all the slot work. Yeah. Oh, because you don't have to crank it anymore. No. Now that's all I want to do. Though they still will they let you like they have the one. That's all I want to do. They have some of them it. do, some of them don't, and uh, I forget where it is. But there's a couple of the older casinos, yeah, maybe down on Fremont. I bet they have sections where there's they're so still dingy. coin operated. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, because I mean, there's just something about that. And you know, this is what's fucked up, and this is this is absolutely true. Uh, even though I'm saying it out loud for the first time, <laughs> I'm sure the reason why they got rid of that was because people were complaining. And also, I don't think they can spend money fast enough. Yeah. So then people would would, would almost get an actual exercise from the slot machine. They'd be like, this sucks. <laughs> totally. like, no, no, no. I just wanted to do the button. Button, 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 button. Well, it's button, all button. engineered to feel like some sort of fake game. Yeah. And just to make your brain tingle from all the flashing lights I don't, lights I don't get sounds. the gambling thing. I did today again because cause it's almost it's, it's like a statistical uh, assurance that the Cavs are going to win this game to, to the Boston <laughs> Celtics. Um but uh, other than that, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to be gambling. I don't understand how these yeah. people do it. Sometimes I'll play a slot just for fun. But yeah. I'll usually put like a dollar or two. Yeah, in. that's like, how I'm I feel. not going to put a hundred dollars in a slot machine. Sometimes we'll do a scratch off. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like if somebody, if, honestly, this happens to me all the time. If somebody lets, I like, I'll, I'll always get because uh, it's uh, New York mentality. You just like you buy one thing sometimes. So you just go to the store, you get the one thing, and a lot of times people will, will get let me in front of them in line because I'm holding the one thing. I got yeah. peanut butter and like a, and like batteries and like I don't know what he's going to do. But <laughs> Uh, he's got less stuff than me. So they'll go, oh, you only got that? Yeah, go ahead. And then whenever that happens, I'll always buy somebody uh, a dollar yeah. uh, lottery ticket because I think uh, I like the idea that I leave and then they you know, they win $500. Like, that's that's, <laughs> that's like pretty weird, cool. And that's a weird game show that like I'm like I'm the star of. I'm like, I'm like here, here's, your, here's your future. I mean, none of them have ever won, I'm sure, but like here's your future. Uh, totally. You know? I mean, I've won pretty big. On, yeah. Well, big-ish on some stuff. Uh, what's scratchers. What's big biggish? Like, oh, on a scratcher? Really? Yeah. One time I won like 50 bucks on really? a dollar scratch off. Okay, I thought you were going to say like $500. No. Not like five. But 50 bucks is a lot if you just spent a dollar. Yeah, I would, sho- I would shove a child down an escalator for, for $500. <laughs> for sure. I'd shove a child down an escalator for, for two. <laughs> <laughs> I just shove children down this escalators. Guy's, That's just what I do. Fun for my own entertainment. Yeah, Film right. it, put it on YouTube. Yeah, well, then, and then back to your channel. That the 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 uh, what are you calling it? Are you calling it a macabre channel? What are you calling it? Uh, I'm Is right now. Scary it's channel? just yeah, horror, horror related. That's the word. You mean. Yeah, I, I like to. I'm still I'm still like kind of brainstorming the direction because there's like all kinds of yeah, things that right, I want to do. I right. basically. I am a huge fan of horror movies yeah. and like anything related to them, and especially the production of horror movies. And okay. so I kind of just want to like favorite get horror. more and more behind the scenes. My favorite, uh, probably Juan de los Muertos. It's Juan of the Dead. Wow. It's I this one. Oh, Juan. It's so good. Yeah. So it's the zombie apocalypse okay. set in Castro's Cuba. 
Holy shit, that sounds amazing. Now, it's all in Spanish? Subtitles? It is in Spanish with subtitles. Okay, do you I speak think Spanish? A uh, little bit. Okay, un poquito. Un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing. So uh, the people ask me, I go, un poquito, and then they start speaking, and I'm like, no, no, no that's no, the only no, one no. I know. That's the only one. <laughs> like, I can order food and ask just, for the bathroom. No, I just know like, un poquito. That's the only yeah. thing I know, because it sounds fun. And I can, like, understand Spanish, right. kind of. No, I. this happens too fast. Yeah. I can't figure out how my, my brain can't figure out <laughs> how to break it up. Okay, sorry. So, one of the dead. Yes. And the That's whole the whole thing is the zombie apocalypse starts breaking out and the government and the news are telling everybody that they're dissidents and they're like trying to play it off like yeah. oh these are just dissidents yeah. like they're they're bad people. Right. <laughs> like and so people have no idea what's going on. They're like trying to figure out like how to And make they're not them. even quarantining them. They're just they're just no, around. They're just around. And then this guy Juan and his friends uh, come up with this task force of like zombie killers because oh, they Juan's against the zombies. They figure out how to actually kill these people. Now, and they're how, like, oh no, they have to go. Now, I don't know if this, I don't know if this gives away the movie or not. Spoiler: What's because this is my favorite part about zombie movies is, is every zombie movie has a different murder, like the like the most effective way. What's the most effective way to kill a zombie in one of the dead? Um, they all have different weapons. One of my favorite kill scenes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil it for you because uh, it's just a really no, fucking fine. funny so you're scene. Just describing the scene is fine. Um, there's like an old lady neighbor. Spoiler alert! If you gotta cover yours, cover yours. There's an old lady neighbor, and she he like checks on her sometimes, yeah. and she's like the crazy old lady neighbor, and she goes and he like accidentally shoots her with a harpoon. <laughs> Through the chest? Yeah, and then she gets up and keeps walking towards him, she's a, she's and they have she's to, a like, zombie. shoot her in the head, yeah. Oh, wow, that's so funny. So, wait, the, now a harpoon is connected with some kind of, like, you, like a... Um, like a string, a string right? Because you've got to get yeah. it back. Yeah. Because <laughs> it goes into the water, usually. Yeah, oh, it's like great. a fishing line. But, so the so the only way to kill them, then, again, same thing, is through the same brain. Same thing, is yeah. Brain, okay. Brain kill. Headshots. Right. So, okay, it seems, uh, that seems like a, a good place to end, brain kill. Um... Well, I, I appreciate you coming and doing this. Um, yeah, so check uh, one more time. What's the what's the handle on the YouTube? So the YouTube is Daisy Doomsday. So YouTube.com slash Daisy Doomsday. No mm-hmm. E, Daisy. No. And then Daisy Ducati. It's at Daisy Ducati's Twitter. Yeah, and Inst- Instagram. Instagram. Same. Do you want people to Snapchat you? Snapchat I sell. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. so you have private Snapchat. You can hit me up out. if you want to get on my private Snapchat. H-M- hit, hit you up where? Hit you up on... Hit me up on Twitter, on Twitter. Instagram. HMU in the on on uh, on Twitter for the for the private uh, uh, Snapchat. What, yeah. what can, we, uh, let's, can we get a little preview of like what kind of things would happen on there? All kinds of stuff. I break all of Snapchat's rules. Okay. I, I don't even know what Snapchat's rules. Are. I'm pretty. I, I didn't realize at first that they had rules. Yeah, what are they? <laughs> but apparently, you're not supposed to be naked at all on Snapchat. Really? Yeah. How would they know though? Right. I'm naked. All, I, so I'm basically, not even, and I'm nobody and nothing. I think and someone wants has to, to report naked. you. Okay. And like I'm story. operating off of the assumption that someone that paid to be on my Snapchat is not going to report me yeah. for what they paid to see. Sure. Wouldn't that be funny if that's if that's what they paid? Like the same guy <laughs> five years ago who was flagging all your posts. Maybe. When you're, when you're still dancing on Facebook, does all the work, gets your Snapchat, does the private thing, pays. How much is it? 30 bucks. 30 bucks a month? No, it's just 30 bucks full subscription. Oh, 30 bucks, uh, and then just just so that he can come on and flag you. You know, that I've be been fantastic. surprised by people's level of pettiness before, so. Yeah, yeah. 30 bucks just to ruin somebody's life. I, uh, yeah, whatever. That, that work. Um, then cool. I'll just post my butthole somewhere else. But that butthole, <laughs> I like that response. I like that that's, that that's the, the go-to, is you just like, you know what? Fuck all you guys. Here's my butthole. <laughs> totally. And what did you, and, and so I, I don't know. It was just like bent over, spread wide open, like oh, you, kiss oh, my you ass. Opened it up? Oh, yeah. Shit. It was great. Oh man. <laughs> I remember the days when my when my butthole could take a picture. I would never I would never let my butthole be in a photo in 2017 at 34 years old. <laughs> there's no more butthole uh, representation. Uh, it's a good place to end. All right. So <laughs> Speaking of our, our people podcast. We started we're, we're, we started and ended in the same place, I think, talking about your butthole uh, <laughs> and, its, and its photogenic capabilities. Uh, yep. So this, is, this was episode nine. Uh, you found it. 
Uh, you found the podcast, you know where we are. Check us out on the web, Porn Stars Are People. Please follow Daisy Ducati. Yes, and uh, check out my website, daisyducati.com. Check out the website and check, look, look forward to all the, the horror things that are going to happen uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Yeah. And then uh, worst case scenario, just a, a butthole gets, gets posted. Uh, <laughs> if you guys are spiting her with comments. Uh, so, I feel like we just a bunch of people. Don't encourage them. Uh, the, <laughs> they can the, Google my butthole. Those butthole days have come and gone, guys. She's no longer interested in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, butthole revenge, okay? Yeah, no. Although butthole revenge, I feel like it's like, it's like a but- genre of something. <laughs> I um, might make a movie out of yeah, this. Yeah, it's called Butthole Revenge. Uh, and we'll just, we'll just translate it back into Spanish. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, Revenjo de culo. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, check us out everywhere. iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, uh, TuneIn, uh, and the Google Play Store. We got all of your, uh, all your things, all your devices. Uh, Alexa, all of us, all of them will play us. Thank you so much for listening to the Real Podcast. I am Dan Fergalette. Woo! I'm Daisy Ducati. Daisy Ducati. Cool, that was great. Yay! Thank you.